Good afternoon, fellow ice staters. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your daily dose of headlines you may have missed for Thursday, March 22nd, 2018, episode 46. You give us 20 minutes and we'll give you headlines that aren't dominated with fear porn. We'll give you headlines of awareness, hope, action, and yes, maybe a little lulls. And just for the YouTube crowd, you missed a whole little spiel I did where I, I teased what the lulls of the day could have been. I'll just give you a clue. It's not the Biden-Trump uh, high school fight threats. Although, man, oh, it almost made it on. Oh, it's so awesome. It's an awesome story. I may still write about it in future because it's such a wonderful story. You can get show notes at istate.tv slash h046, which is linked in the video description for both the Facebook and YouTube shows. Today's show title is... GovTube clamps down on pesky liberty. On today's episode of Headlines You May Have Missed, GovTube goes full anti-gun, print your own phone, Afrin unites the Kurds, social media tax, and more. And if you're watching live on Facebook, don't forget to stay tuned in because I will respond to the comments, so make sure you comment after the YouTube part of the show is over. And now... Ladies and gentlemen, here are your 20 minutes of headlines you may have missed. YouTube becomes GovTube with new anti-gun rules. So at one point, I referred to YouTube, I said they were going CorpTube. And you know, I think it's much more accurate to say they're going GovTube because in, in point of fact, most corporations are heavily heavily embedded, I mean, most major mega corporations are heavily embedded with government, and the two are almost one at this point. So, GovTube it is. GovTube, that is YouTube, which has become GovTube, specifically the parts of Gov that advance the very far left statist agenda of the Progressive Party, the Democrat Party, uh, in before I'd be happy if they advanced the uh, far right statist agenda of the uh, Conservative Party, the Republican Party. No, no, I would not. Uh, they have announced some draconian new policies regarding guns that appear to open wide the door for GovTube to all but ban gun videos on the neo-puritanical social media video platform. So the policy states that videos that, quote, intend to sell firearms or certain firearms accessories, they'll be banned. It also intends on banning videos that show people how to speed up the rate of fire. And so what you're going to do here, you get your little trigger finger here and you just squeeze it faster. Banned! It also will ban videos that provide... Quote, instructions on manufacturing an, a firearm, ammunition, high-capacity magazine. And so uh, you, uh, uh, in order to replace your, your magazine release, you have to have a certain alumen wrench. Banned! Finally, it will ban videos that, quote, show users to install the above-mentioned accessories. So... If it looks like a gun, if it smells like a gun, if it talks like a gun, if it has a shadow of a gun, banned! It's not going to happen all at once. The mad dash by gun video creators to find a new platform has already begun, and unlike some, I am actually optimistic that such platforms will quickly emerge. Full 30 is a great place to start, but it does have a limited number of gun channels. I'm sure there's a lot of people that are going to be going to Full 30 and say, Yo, man, <laughs> I want a channel. One content creator in range. And by the way, half of uh, in range is uh, Ian. Is his last, I think it's McCullough. I know his first name's Ian. That's clear as day, clear as mud. Uh, uh, but he also does Forgotten Weapons, so I don't know if this will carry over to that. But in range, they pulled their content off of YouTube and, well, GovTube, and they're now posting their videos on Pornhub. There's also DTube and even BitChute as uh, other viable options. And by the way, if you happen to be like a, a, a serious badassery developer who can really do uh, video uh, platform uh, development, uh, talk to me. Um, maybe we can go into a venture together or we can, if we could formulate a pen, maybe we could start a, a, 
uh, Indiegogo or whatever, uh, GoFundMe or whatever crap. I don't even know. Does Indiegogo still exist? I haven't heard it referenced in a while. Uh, but I do have a domain name that I think would be great for this project, guntuber.com. So uh, I'm not going to read the full details of their policy announcement. I'll let you go to that. But uh, in addition to the policy announcement, they also put in a clever little link to assure people or to help people, uh, encourage people to flag gun videos. So they're going to set their army against you. And with that, uh, with its new overt assault against guns, tools of self-defense for almost all who possess them, YouTube is now coming out of its fascist cattle car guide poli police state enabling closet. And YouTube, with Alphabet as its parent company at this point, is pretty much letting the world know that you should think of it the same way you think of any oppressive government agency that is out to report you, silence you, and assure that the official state narrative is advanced by any means necessary. How about some good news, folks? I got some good news. I got some really... This was almost the top story. I wavered between these two stories. In the end, I, I picked the GovTube story, but I could have easily picked this one. This is this is really, really huge news, and you're probably about one or two years years away from maybe seeing this come to fruition, but that would be extraordinary in and of itself. Printing your own phone is not far away thanks to 4-in-1 3D printer. So uh, some people are calling this a 4D printer, and some are calling it a 4-in-1 3D printer. And whatever you call it, there is a new printer in the development stages that could soon make it possible for you to literally... I love saying that word, by the way. I use it a lot because I just love saying a literally print out your own smart smartphone right in the comfort of your home. This is from nature.com. A prototype 3D printer has, for, for the first time, combined several printing methods to enable researchers to produce devices out of multiple materials in a single print run. So far, the machine has created basic electronic devices, but the technology brings materials scientists a step closer to their goal of printing complex equipment such as robots or smartphones. The printer is being presented at a meeting of the American Chemical Society in New Orleans on 21 March. I know all you little chemical addicts are going to run down there, but it's not probably the kind of chemicals you're looking for. This is a remarkable technological advance and a great leap for the field of 3D printing, says Zhu Shao, a material scientist at the Massachusetts at MIT. Uh, who was not involved in the work. Okay, good. Good getting a quote from the guy that was not involved in the work. Good one. Good times. The most common 3D printers heat a plastic filament and lay it down on repeated lines, building layered structures from the bottom up. This is the technique used in inexpensive consumer models. Several other 3D printing methods have also emerged in recent years, including spraying fine streams of aerosols, Printing with liquid resin that is then cured to form a flexible polymer, laying down thin layers of ink that are dried and hardened when exposed to light, and even printing ink that contains conductive nanoparticles to produce wires and circuits. Each printing technology has its own limitations. We put four 3D pre printing technologies under one platform, and I do encourage you to go to the show notes and read the just the rest of what I have on my site, as well as click through and read the full article. And I mean, that's that's this is pretty big news, folks. This is exciting. 3D printing to me is one of the leading edge technologies that will enable individuals and free and so free associations to literally build their own self reliance. Will Afrin unite the Kurds against the K Turk Reich? Well. I'm, 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 I'm completely biased here. Yes, I hope so. The Turk Reich's move to invade and brutalize the people of Afrin is triggering a galvanizing move by the Kurds who were previously not united. A rally within Turkey itself in the city of Diyarbakir. 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 You know, Diyarbakir. 
course, uh, demonstrated exactly how the Kurds are now prepared to come together and fight their common enemy, the jackbooted thugs of the Thur Turk Reich. Yes, yes, you can see I don't like the Turk Reich, I guess. If you figured that out by now, if you've watched more than one show, you, you figured it out. In Turkey's Kurd this is from U.S. News. In Turkish Kurdish heartland, anger over Syria war finds a stage. Tens of thousands of Turkish Kurds turned an annual cultural festival into a rare mass political protest on Wednesday. That's yesterday against the government's two-month-old military campaign against a Kurdish militia in neighboring Syria against against Afri, Afrin. So at a rally to mark the spring festival of Nuwats. No, I'm, I'm near, near, near Roz, and it's N E W R O Z in the southern city of uh, Diyarbakir. 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 I'm going to get it, man. I'm going to get it. You guys try and pronounce it. Demonstrators said Ankara risk provoking violence at home if it pressed on with its Syrian offensive. Europe proposes social media tax. Yay, social media tax. So if you click on a picture, if you share a post, if you like a comment, you set in motion business transactions that must be taxed. After all, you do realize if there's any profit made anywhere doing anything that the government has some magical mystery right to get its cut, right? I mean, that goes without saying. You make some money, government government has that magical mystery right to get its cut, right? I mean, that goes without saying, right? That's the logic behind a push by the European Union to create a new tax scheme that would result in charging you for using social media. And, and sure, they'll, they'll say they're taxing big social, but they're really taxing you because big social will pass the cost on to its advertisers, which will pass the cost on to you. Now, the delightful part of this story is that the, the United States and the EU will find themselves at odds with each other as they fight over who gets the magical mystery right to take their cut of the profit from someone else's efforts as the parties involved are crossing magical mystery boundaries as well. National borders, in this case, U.S. borders and EU borders, and this is from the New York Times, European authorities on Wednesday, that's yesterday, proposed revamping the way many technology companies in the region are taxed, outlining wide-ranging changes that they hope will curb what they're calling tax avoidance. <laughs> tax avoidance, that's what you call your, your, your theft avoidance is now tax avoidance, so great. Uh, uh, across the European Union, the system would tax a company's revenue in the countries where they are generated rather than its profits. Regulators say so-called profit shifting allows some businesses to use regional offices and low tax countries to reduce payments. The plan, this is the, the juicy part. I really, I kind of like this part. <laughs> and you know what? Uh, the Yes, the next story, the, the lulls of the day is coming up, and it's, it's kind of going to play into this in a second because uh, I have a solution for these guys coming up. The plan pits the European Union against the United States as both sides battle to retain corporate tax revenue. It, booty. <laughs> retain booty. It is, it is one of a number of issues on which Brussels and Washington have clashed from the broader regulation of the technology industry to a dispute over American steel and aluminum tariffs. And then here's, here's a beauty quote. Ready? This is from some, some, some twat waddle European Union. Oh, he's, a Euro, he's the European Union tax commissioner. Everybody hiss when you hear his name. Pierre Moscovici. Boo! The digital revolution has turned our economies upside down. When you like a picture, when you post a video on social media, your click sets in motion a chain of business transactions and thus creates considerable profits. But under today's rules, these profits are not taxed. I don't see a problem. 
I don't see a freaking problem here, Mr. Muscovy. The current legal vacuum is creating a substantial shortfall in the budgetary revenues of our member states. You mean you keep increasing budgets and so you have to increase revenues and you're seeing an opportunity to increase revenue and you're locked out of it because of your own idiotic rules. And now you want to change your idiotic rules so that you can uh, politely steal from people in a more effective way. There you go. That's, that's, that's called degoving. That's what I just did there. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here is, ladies and gentlemen, prepare yourself. This is your daily loss. Now, before I, I say what the story is, now, if you're listening on the audio, you're missing the visual accompaniment. I'm just going to play the vi uh, visual accompaniment. I did mute it so you can't hear it. So you can just, you just see the juiciness that I'm talking about. And you're going to see a parliamentary, it's a parliamentary building. And there's smoke that's going off and uh, there's some, the parliamentary people. This is Kosovo's parliament, and uh, yeah, they're they're not feeling so good because uh, the opposition party <laughs> it set off tear gas. It set off tear gas in the parliament building. <laughs> this is this is your daily lulls. This is what beat out uh, Trump and Biden fighting each other, and it's kind of on that theme, though. It's it's a beautiful story, so. Some people will, of course, point to this as troubling news. Uh, dangerous side of the times, sign of the times. But not me. No, 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 no. This news warms the proverbial cockles of my proverbial, allegedly, heart. Uh, <laughs> and I'm not going to, uh, uh, I'm not going to swear or take an oath as to whether I actually have a heart or not. We're just, let's just keep moving on and just gloss over that. It seems the opposition party in Kosovo's parliament, they didn't want to build a pass that would ratify a border agreement with Montenegro. So, rather than discuss it rationally, the opposition party simply chose to set off tear gas in the parliament, thus ending the voting process all together. Hold on. I got to clap. Ready? Ready, ladies and gentlemen? This is me clapping. That is a beautiful thing. And if you don't if you don't understand how that's a beautiful thing, then you suffer from uh what is it called? Oh my gosh, Stockholm syndrome. Yes, you're Stockholm syndrome. That's what you are. I know, I know it it seems rather uncivil, but do let's remember we are talking about a small clutch of narcissistic lords and ladies. I don't know how many ladies there are in the Kosovo parliament. There may be some. I don't know. I didn't see any ladies in that video. Making decisions that affect thousands of people. It seems only fitting that these, uh, the, the, that these narcissists would beat the crap out of each other in their bid to be supreme narcissists. There can be only one. I hope. Oh, man. I, I, that'd be great. If they could just like have a fight to the death that there could be only one. And then when they were all dead and there was only one left, then the rest of us are like, aha, now there's only one of you. <laughs> Rather than looking at this as a troubling sign of dangerous times, I look at this as the start of what I hope will be a trend that will sweep across the world. I hope this is b bigger than Pokemon Go. I say, make thuggery great again. Encourage more narcissistic politicos to tear tear gas each other when they don't get their way. I mean, I mean, think about it. Who wouldn't pay to see Chuck Schumer lobbing tear gas grenades at Mitch McConnell? I know I would. Who has two thumbs? <laughs> well, I don't know how the rest of that goes. How's that go? Oh, how's that go? Who has two thumbs in this face? This guy. Whatever. I don't know. All right. I failed. Anyway, or Paul Ryan unleashing a flamethrower on Nancy Pelosi. Come on, dudes. Come on, dudettes. Is it sexist to say dudette? I don't know. Somebody PM me and let me know. Uh, is my is my hopes for running for president over after that faux pas? Let's make politics fun for everyone. Let's get tear gas bomb throwing politicians in Washington, in Harrisburg, in Sacramento. 
I don't want to go through all the state capitals, but, you know, you can break it down, you know, whatever your town councils, wherever, wherever there's a meeting of idiots who presume to come together to rule over the many, there should be politicos in that building willing to throw tear gas. If you're not willing to throw tear gas, then you're not my kind of politician. I'll just say that. And I mean, just throw it all the time. Just, just throw it. I spent way too much time on the lulls of the day, but I don't care. Batteries boosted by carbon nanotube net. A net could be the solution to extending the lifetime and capacity of lithium-ion batteries. The net is made out of carbon nanotubes. A team of researchers from Georgia Tech and Stony Brook University are behind the net power boosting discovery. I'm going to go through these quickly because we're running out of time. Lithium air battery now closer to reality. The theoretical lithium air battery now has a working model that demonstrates its viability. And this is from the researchers at the University of Illinois at Chicago and at Argonne National Laboratory. They have a working lithium air battery. Congress inserts gun regs into budget at the last minute. Right. At the last minute, they inserted some 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 common sense uh, uh, tweaks to the uh, national ba background check uh, regulations. And I'm, I'm sure there's there's nothing to fear there, folks. They inserted it at the last minute into a budget that's totally unrelated. But I'm sure there's nothing to worry about. Scientists pierce the mystery of electrons inside graphene. So graphic graphene. So for the first time, scientists have finally entered the mysterious center of graphene. They can now observe how electrons behave inside graphene. Turkish bank attacked in Greece as response to Afrin invasion. And finally, Vermont anti-gun bill passes House Judiciary Committee. And that's it, folks. That is it. We've run out of our 20 minutes of headlines. I can go no further. I've told you before, I'm, I'm very much anti-absolutarian, but when it comes to that time, that 20 minutes, I'm strict on that. 20 minutes and no more. That's all we have today for headlines you may have missed. If you would like to read more about the stories we covered today, just go to isheadlines.com and find the show notes for March 22nd, 2018, or check out the link to the show notes page in the description for both the Facebook live stream and the YouTube video, or you can go to istate.tv slash H046. Also, if you wait two or three hours, so hours, thereabouts, you can find our audio podcast show on iTunes and Stitcher by searching for iState. And the audio podcast of this version of the show only includes that 20 minutes of headlines. So that's it. It has no introduction. It has no outroduction. I'm going to say outroduction. It's a new word. I just invented it, and it works for me. Introduction and outroduction. These are now things. If you're watching on YouTube, you missed the opening of the show. And you'll also miss the very end, which you can only hear if you watch live on my personal Facebook page, Paul Gordon. Look for the guy with the AR-15. And yes, the AR-15 is long gone, lost horribly, lost in a tragic boating accident. Don't forget to join me tonight on Is Daily Thursday with Lou Sander at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Liberty Principle Facebook page. The page is linked in the video descriptions of both YouTube and Facebook versions. Tonight's show is titled... Don't tax me, bro. I'm a freaking robot. As always, remember, those who need to control thoughts need to control news. Until tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is Paul Gordon of iState.tv saying, have a great rest of your day, fellow iStaters.